Well, it's week number seven of the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show, and we welcome everybody to Old Town Fort Collins. Live at the Beach House Grill for this edition of the Steve Fairchild Coaches Show. Welcome, everybody. Brian Roth with you. Happy to have you with us. We'll be here coming up for the next hour as we talk Colorado State Ram football as Colorado State gets set to take on UNLV. It's a homecoming matchup this Saturday afternoon at at Sunny Lubick Field at Hughes Stadium. UNLV coming in at 1-5. and five. It, well, it should be a pretty good contest as Colorado State looks for their first Mountain West Conference win of the season. And, and there should be a pretty good crowd out there at Hughes Stadium on Saturday afternoon. It is homecoming weekend. It uh, the uh, ticket office already reporting that the uh, north end zone there at Hughes Stadium has already have been sold out. So expect a, a big crowd there in that bold off north end zone. It'd be great to get a big crowd out there to cheer on the Rams as they get set to take on the Rebels. Of course, the Rams are coming off a loss down at Colorado Springs. Yet another top 25 team at the Rams faced. It was 25th ranked Air Force, and they would drop that one by the score of 20, uh, I should say 49 to 27. But as a game in which Play Colorado State offensively really got going and they got going <clears throat> on the ground. 285 rushing yards in the contest for Colorado State. Hands down the most rushing yards that they've had all season. 5.7 yards per rush. And how about this number? They outrushed Air Force in that contest on Saturday afternoon. I, I don't think anybody would have told you that that was even a possibility going into the game with the way that Air Force, the number one ranked rushing team of the nation, came into that contest averaging over 360 rushing yards a game. Well, Colorado State held them to 248. The Rams rushed at 285, but in the end, not enough as Tim Jefferson made enough plays with his arms and, of course, special teams. Rams had a few issues on Saturday with their special teams, but and get a chance to turn it around coming up this weekend. Again, UNLV in Colorado State. It'll be a noon kickoff for the third consecutive week out there at Sunny Lubick Field. Hey, Ram fans, don't forget that Poudre Valley Health System, they're proud to be the exclusive health care sponsor of Ram Athletics, and, of course, they're proud to state. When you need medical care, they're here for you. For more information, visit pvhs.org. We'll be joined by the coach, Steve Fairchild, coming up next. But first, this time out, we're live on a Wednesday night here in Old Town, Fort Collins. It's the Coors Light, Steve Fairchild, Coaches Show, here on the Colorado State Sports Network. Back at Old Town, Fort Collins, here at the Beach House Grill. Coors Light, Steve Fairchild, Coaches Show. Brian Roth, along with the coach, Steve Fairchild, as the Rams get set to take on UNLV coming up Saturday afternoon. It's a homecoming game for CSU. Well, Steve, we look back at that uh, Air Force game, and when well, you look at some of the stats in that contest, I, I touched on them a little bit in that opening segment, but there were some, uh, I guess, strange stats that I, I, I think most people wouldn't have seen coming going into that contest. I mean, you guys outrushed Air Force in that game. Well, we did. You know, I, I thought, uh, you know, we talked as a football team in order to win that game, number one, we were going to have to uh, run the football and try to try to control some clock and not play a 70 play uh, game defensively. And, and we did that very well. I thought we ran the ball well. Our offensive line was physical. Uh, it was good to get Leonard Mason back. We, we hammered it in there a little bit. Uh, so that part we did. We thought we had uh, to get an edge on special teams. You, you know, that's always big on the road. And Although our return game with, with Derek Good uh, was good and flashed, uh, we, we certainly got outplayed in the special teams area. Uh, you know, they took a kick back and, and had the fake on the uh, on the field goal attempt. So they, they did a nice job in that area. And then, uh, you know, our thing was that we knew they were going to run the football, but you cannot uh, let an Air Force team get the big play uh, throwing the ball on you. And, and uh, you know, they didn't throw it a ton, but when they did, they made some big plays, and, and we've got to do a better job of keeping the ball in front of us. So. You know, it was a game they, they uh, you know, they certainly outplayed us, deserved to win, but there were some bright spots. It just seems like we're a football team. One area gets good one week, one area gets good another week, and uh, I think we're about ready to put one of these games where we get everyone, all three phases and everybody playing well at the same time. Yeah, consistency, I guess, has been a bit of an issue because you look at that TCU game, Steve, and the offense and the defense for you guys were juxtaposed. The, the, the defense played great, and the offense couldn't move yeah, the ball. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we held TCU out of the end zone the first half, played a great game defensively, and we couldn't move the ball. Uh, you know, at all. You know, I think we had three seven and outs, and we turn around and, you know, we're, we look, uh, you know, fairly adept at running the football this week and, and move the ball pretty pretty decently at times, but we struggled defensively. So, you know, and we've had some ups and downs on special teams as well, but uh, we're practicing hard and 
Uh, you know, you, you look out there today, I know you were out there, just, uh, you know, great attitude, a lot of enthusiasm. We're, you know, I think the kids are still into it and uh, having fun doing what they're doing. So, uh, you know, we're about ready to unload one on somebody. Hopefully it'll be this Saturday. Yeah, the, the inconsistencies, I, I know it's tough to put your finger on as to what exactly it is, but I imagine it has to be frustrating as a, as a head coach to, to see those inconsistencies, uh, you know, as continue. Well, you know, obviously, at one point, we're going to be a mature football team. You know, I was talking with Johnny Square today, you know, the, the maturity, you know, you use it as, as kind of a verb or a process. You know, we are maturing or, or eventually we're going to be mature. And, uh, you know, we knew going in that there was going to be some of this uh, this season because there's just too many spots where we were going to be awfully young. But, uh, you know, kind of that excuse is gone at this point. You know, we've had a long August, a long off season. We played six uh, games. and. Uh, you know, our team's kind of anxious now to see what we can do this second half of the season and, uh, you know, not worry about who's, who's a freshman or sophomore, but go out and see what we got. You know, Air Force got up to such a quick start in that football game, and I know they went right down the field on their opening drive. Did it kind of maybe knock you guys off balance a little bit? Well, I did. You know, in hindsight, I thought we were going to run the ball on them well. And in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have deferred. I would have taken the ball. But, uh, you know, we busted a coverage a couple times, and we did on that first series. And, uh, you do that, you give them the big pass play, and when Air Force has the big pass play in their offense, uh, you're, you're not stopping them. You know, talking to Larry Kerr, saying, you know, you really have to work those option teams inside out. You have to take away Jared, too. I mean, after all, third leading rusher in the Mountain West coming into last week's game, he was their guy that had been their, been their most consistent back. You took him away, but then you got hurt on the outside with well, Clark. Yeah, and we've been, Larry and I have both been doing this uh, long enough. If, if the fullback... Uh, or the quarterback and like I, I keep saying take that quarterback away because yeah. he's a tremendous player uh, You know, we're, we're gonna make him pitch the ball that that's that's uh, the least of the the three aspects if, if you can't stop the fullback or the quarterback it is a Don't Long a yeah, it's it's a long afternoon So, you know, hopefully you can slow play things and make make it string out get a pitch get off some blocks outside and and minimize the the rush not the rushing yards, you know, you're not gonna shut them down but minimize what they do in that area, but as you're doing it, you cannot let the ball get in behind you. And that, that was the critical mistakes that we made. Yeah. Colorado State, again, struggled a little bit on defense. But offensively, uh, the Rams might have found their stride in that rushing game. You hope you can carry that over to next week. We will talk to Coach Fairchild about that. We'll also take your phone calls. If you want to hop on board, 1-866-702-7691. Again, that's 866-702-7691 if you want to ask the coach a question. We'll take a timeout. More with the coach, Steve Fairchild. It's the Coors Light. Steve Fairchild, Coach's Show, live tonight at Old Town Fort Collins on the Colorado State Sports Network. Well, we're on the air until 7.30 here tonight at the Beach House Grill in Old Town Fort Collins for the Coors Light. Steve Fairchild, Coach's Show. Here on the Colorado State Sports Network, Rams and the Rebels coming up here this weekend. And don't forget, there are tickets still available, that annual homecoming game. It's always a hot ticket. It's the Rams and the Rebels, October 16th. That's this Saturday. Kickoff at noon. Call 1-800-491-RAMS or visit csurams.com for tickets. Brian Roth back with you along with the coach Steve Fairchild. And we're going to go to the uh, phone lines here in just one moment. But I wanted to ask you in more detail about that rushing game because it, you had struggled rushing the football for the most part through the first five games. And then you go for 285 in, in your sixth game. Can, can you put your finger on it, why you were so much more successful well, last week? Well, I think, uh, I think we'd had our moments uh, in the first five games. You know, sometimes the, the game dictates or the, the scheme of the defense dictates uh, not only how well you're going to run football, but how often you're going to run it. But, uh, uh, you know, we've been making steady improvement. And, and, you know, we knew with the young offensive line that as soon as we settled into the starters and, and the, the, you know, how we're going to rotate the next two to three guys and, and they start getting some time in there, not just time at practice, but time on, the, uh, on Saturdays playing together that we would continue to improve, which we're doing. And so that helps getting Leonard Mason back. Obviously, he... You know, he's, he's healthy now, and he brings a little bit of punch to the, the run game. So there's a lot of elements, you know, as Pete Thomas continues to get us in and out of the right thing, uh, that helps as well. So, uh, you know, we're certainly not there by any means, but uh, I think we'll continue to improve, and this could be a very, very good offensive line and therefore a good run offense. Uh, Leonard Mason, uh, I thought, played outstanding on Saturday. 
What is it about him and his running style? Because you look at him, he doesn't look overly fast, but he has pretty good feet and he has pretty good well, vision. He's, he's, a, he's a big, strong kid. He, he runs with a low center of gravity. He's got he's got Gartrell Johnson type ability. Uh, you know, I didn't think he finished uh, runs like he's capable of in the in the first part of his career here, but he's starting to get very, very good with that. And I, I was, I thought he had a tremendous game. I, you know, you could see him uh, entering into the the traffic type runs where his pads were underneath tacklers and his legs were accelerating and uh, he's got the ability to wear people out and and he showed a little bit of that uh, uh, last Saturday and, and we need more of that from Leonard but I, I'm just so darn proud of him because you know here here's a senior that you know a senior year is not going the way he wants it and he, he trains hard from January all through the summer and then he comes up lame uh, you know the first part of the season and, and he's third or fourth on the depth chart and, and rather than hanging his head and uh, letting a good opportunity go by, he sat and bided his time. He worked hard and knew his opportunity was going to come, and it did last Saturday. And, and it, he, he represented himself and, and came through big for our football team. Yeah, you know, I was about ready to ask you about that because he was almost the forgotten man in that in that running back core. Do do you have to sit down with a kid like that ever and say, "Listen, keep your head well, up, keep working hard"? You know, we did, but it's still ultimately his decision on how he's going to approach things. But I'm, I'm very proud of what he did and. You know, that's the nature of a football team. One minute you're a third team guy, and the next minute, uh, you know, there's a hundred guys out there that need you to win a game. And, you know, Derek Good's a perfect example of that. You know, we might have gone the whole season without letting Derek Good do a, a kickoff, but something happens, and all of a sudden he's he's back to returning kicks and comes up big. And and it's because Derek practices hard and and has a very good attitude about things and a very good work ethic. And and that's guys like that they end up succeeding not just on the football field but in life. One eight six six seven zero two seven six nine one. The phone number tonight here. And let's go to the phone lines. Dave's in Lakewood. Dave, you're on with the coach, Steve Fairchild. Hey there, gentlemen. How you doing this evening? Doing good, Dave. How are you? Doing great, Steve. Hey, if there's one area of the game where both sides of the ball appear to me to be executing pretty well, it's in discipline and not getting any penalties. Is that an area of the game you've been seeing improvement throughout the season? And how does that bode for the potential of getting a couple wins later on? Well, I think, I think it, it's a big part of what we do, Dave. I, I think uh, the, you, you start out as a football team saying, let's not beat ourselves uh, by doing things like penalties and, and turning the ball over. You know, we, we started out the first part of the season, and we had, uh, I think we had one penalty and then two penalties. Uh, in each of the first two games and, and we only had two I think uh, last Saturday so we've been very very good at times we had a game in there where we had about 12 and uh, you know we just we just didn't play very smart but I, I know this you know they they tend to fluctuate but if you if you demand things on the practice field you'll get them on the game field and, and I believe if you coach kind of a lackadaisical type of thing at practice and allow guys to get away with bad habits then you're gonna have penalties on Saturday and I've got a great staff and we don't do that so uh, I, I, it's, it's, I'm kind of curious. You noticed that the, the penalties were in our favor, and that's that's kind of cool because it is a big part of the game. And this Saturday against UNLV, what's the uh, defense focus for what we need to do to stop the UNLV offense? Well, always we we do not want to give up the big play, and they've got some explosive receivers and a quarterback that's experienced. So. Uh, that formula can can uh, can get the ball in behind you, and we can't allow that to happen. And then, secondly, we just got to run the football and tackle. Uh, you know, we we cannot we cannot not wrap up the ball carrier and, and let them get extra yards in that regard. So, I like our defensive plan. I, I think Larry's done a nice job. I think we're starting to play uh, a little more assignment sound on that side of the ball. And, and if we can shore up the deep ball, I, I think we're going to play a good game defensively. Hey, thanks a lot, Steve. Appreciate it. And uh, let's go, Rams. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate the phone call. As always, 1-866-702-7691, the phone number if you want to ask the coach, Steve Fairchild, a question. I, I want to go back to, to, to Derek Good because he, he gets an opportunity and he goes out and he does what he, what he did in the kick return game, but, but you also gave him a couple carries in that football game. I've been meaning to try to get him in there offensively, and, and it's, it's, you know, every time we put him in there he does he does good and, and and then you say well this guy's a walk on and he reminds me of, of uh, Fred Jackson when I was with the Buffalo Bills Fred Jackson showed up and every time we put him in a preseason game he ran wild but he was from Co College in Iowa and we just refused to believe that that he was a good player and, and we just kept putting him on a practice squad and 
eventually we put him in a game and he ran wild on a, in a regular NFL game and it, and it shows you how stupid we all are so <laughs> it's the same thing with Derek Good every time we put him in there he something good happens and and I've got to be smart enough to get him in the games yeah he certainly played well does that cause a dilemma now when you go into UNLV you have Tony Drake who obviously didn't play last week you have Derek Good and then John Mosier what do you do at the kick return spot well uh, Derek Good's our kick return right now and you know John's always done a good job and we put him back there and I expect Tony to try to compete and get get the job back uh, those are good problems and then and the longer we coach and the longer we recruit we will create that type of good problem uh, at as many positions as we we can have it at well, I know you said you weren't happy overall though with the special teams how, how do you go about shoring up some of those issues well Larry Lewis does a great job and we spend an, an awful lot of time during the week on on not just our, our scheme of special teams but the fundamentals Larry's as good a coach I've been around in that area and, uh, we'll just, you know, we're not perfect, uh, but w our coverage continues to get better as as we get better at the linebacker safety type spots. Uh, our return game is, is flashed and been pretty good. Uh, you know, we're punting the ball outstanding. You know, I, I think we're kicking it good this year. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of positives in that area. Uh, it's an area where I think if we continue to coach and continue to recruit, we can start to create an edge. Uh, for ourselves in games here at Colorado State. Yeah, and by the way, the uh, kickoff return you gave up, Jonathan Warzika, number one in the nation when it comes to kickoff return. I mean, he's he's done it before, and he's one of the best in the nation, and he just happened to get you guys at uh, one time. All right, we'll have more with the coach, Steve Fairchild, here, but first this time out, we're live up at the Beach House Grill in Old Town Fort Collins from Nelligan Sports and the Colorado State Sports Network. Welcome back here to Fort Collins Beach House Grill. We're in Old Town. Nice crowd on hand here tonight for a Wednesday evening to talk Colorado State Ram football with the coach Steve Fairchild. Well, let's go right back to the phone lines here in this segment, and we uh, check in with Daryl in Knoxville. Daryl, how the heck are you? I haven't seen Daryl since we used to cover high school football together up here. Daryl, how are you doing? Okay. Daryl, drop are you off. There? Oh, there you there are, Daryl. What's up? How are you? Not, not much. Good. Good to hear from you guys. I'm sorry. It's been a while. I've been uh, kind of out of pocket doing some school stuff here. <laughs> Daryl, don't take that school too seriously, man. <laughs> oh, I'm tired of it. I want to get out of here. Please let me out. Free me. Uh, I have, uh, first I want to make a little comment, especially being out here in Tennessee, but noticing this week that Georgia had its 11th player arrested, I just wanted to say thank you to you and the staff for recruiting quality kids and also reinforcing, you know, the character values, especially this new community outreach stuff you're doing. I just think that's great. Well, I appreciate it, Daryl, and that's part of the job. Obviously, the, the wins and losses, are, there's no way around that. But uh, after that, I think uh, our job is to d develop these guys, not just as football players, but as, as people and, and get them ready. And, you know, and we have incidences here or there, and, and you know, nothing goes perfect. Uh, but I'll tell you what, it's a good group of kids, and the more you can get them thinking about each other and, and the community and giving back, uh, I think you're doing them a real service. I agree. Um, my, my question is, if you look at Bobby Houck, when he gets on campus, my guess is that he's first concerned with looking at his personnel and then trying to adapt uh, that group to whatever kind of schemes and philosophy he has. When you go back and look at what Montana did, is he, is he adhering so far with what he's done at UNLV to what he did at Montana, or is it adapted it's, to some degree? It's adapted to some degree. I, I've known Bobby for a long time. He was an assistant uh, down at CU when I was here with Sonny. Uh, he's a, really a tremendous coach and, and even a better person. He, he, he's a great guy. Uh, but I know he walked into that situation, and, and that's, that's difficult. Their talent level uh, maybe wasn't uh, the upper end of the conference, and, and he, he's taking over more of a spread offense, and I know he, deep down inside, would like to be more of a downhill uh, power run type of team. So there is some adaptation that, that you do when you, when you take over a, a program and, uh, you know, you try to put guys in the best chance to succeed, but you're also trying to develop and, and kind of mold a football team the way you uh, intend it to be and the way you intend to coach it. So, uh, you know, he's in the first year. We've, we've been there here and, and done that. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to do a good job. I think he's going to be successful. But it's, you know, you got to realize for UNLV, like CSU, it's, it's a process. And you gotta, you got to build it the right way and be in it for the long run to, to have any chance. Yeah, well, I wish you and I'll be all the luck in the world except for on Saturday. I do, too. Likewise, Daryl. <laughs> See you, Daryl. Appreciate it. 
Daryl from Knoxville there, one 702 7691 Interesting thing, you know, he, he goes in there, his first recruiting class, he, he takes eight kids out of Las Vegas, and he said that was going to be one of his main recruiting areas is to try to seal the border of Nevada. Well, he should. You know, it, it, the first rule in recruiting, it, like with us in the state of Colorado and them in Las Vegas, is you better be on every good kid in that area. You're not going to get them all. Uh, but you better be recruiting uh, close to home and, and evaluating right and treating those people right and and so forth. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize they had taken eight. There are some players there. At CSU, we dabble in there a little bit. We've gotten a player or two out of there uh, that, have, that has helped us. You know, it's, it's you know that, that population there for a while was just exploding. They're building a new high school every year there uh, for, for a while there. But... Uh, no, it's good for him, and, and you know, that there, there are some positives that that school has. Uh, there are some things that make it difficult, just like every school. You know, CU, CSU's got some things that make it real good, and, and obviously some things that we feel like we've got to overcome. But uh, he's a good coach. He's got a good staff, and uh, I think they'll work their plan. Midway point of the show here tonight. We'll take another time out as the Coors Light. Steve Fairchild, Coach's Show, live here from the Beach House Grill in Fort Collins on the Colorado State Sports Network.